When trying to learn things, I'm a big fan of spaced repetition systems to do that. Uh, spaced repetition systems work basically like this. If you learn something today, learn someone's name, learn a fact, a quote, whatever, you know it right now, 100%. Tomorrow, suppose that dips to 80%, but you relearn that fact. Now it's gonna take about two days before you drop down to 80%. So you relearn again, now it's gonna take about three days. And this time accelerates more rapidly as you go. So after you do it eight or 10 times, it could be a year before you need to memorize it again because your mind works very well to learn that way. An app I've used for years to help with that and probably will continue to use to some degree is called Anki. Great program, free on every platform except iPhone. It's 25 bucks on iPhone, but it's a great app. I uh, use it for that. But I'm finding more and more stuff in Notion I wish I could apply this spaced repetition system to. So I've figured out how to do that. Uh, it's not perfect, but should do the job. And the way Anki works at its core is that when you get something right, it makes it two and a half times longer. Uh, the gap is two and a half times longer than the gap before. So it kind of, again, it kind of accelerates as you go. I'm liking it a little bit smaller. I'm doing a 2.25 um, gap each time, which makes it look about like this. So day one, nothing. You gotta get it until you get it right. It becomes level two. After level two, it's gonna be one day until you see it again. So you see it the next day. If you get it right, you move up to level three, it's gonna be two days. Get it right again, it's gonna be five days. Get it right again, it's gonna be 11 days to 25. And you can see by the time you get it to level 10, you're almost two years before you'll see that card again, if you get it right every time. If you get it wrong at any point along the way, you go back to the beginning is usually how it works. But to your system, you can do what you want with it. Uh, and then the way Anki and others works, there's a lot of debate online about the best algorithm to use, but they all tend to have an easiness factor. So instead of saying if you got it right or wrong, you can say I got it right and it was easy. I got it right, but it was kind of hard, different things. That's a little more complex than I think um, Notion is really ready for in its formulas, or at least I'm ready to write a formula for. So I'm kind of ignoring that and just going on a straight, this straight system here. So here's how this works on the back end. So suppose we want to memorize some names. We have these people that popped up today. I have a filter in here that says the next is on or before today. So any cards that are due today or were due previous days I didn't look at, I want to see what they are. And the way Anki and these kind of things work is they don't quiz you on things. It's kind of a trusted system. I, I tell it whether I got it right or wrong. So look at the guy at the middle here, trying to remember his name. What is his name? It's George Washington. So we click it. Sure enough, I got it right. So I can see here, he was already a level eight. I first, last got it wrong back in February. He's hypothetical, but cool. So now we'll move him to level nine. You can see now I don't have to see it again until June 30th of next year because I'm at such a high level with it. So when I close out of here, he's gone. You got two more to do today. Um, in a typical day, you may have dozens to do, but this should just give you a good example. So. We'll go with this guy on the right. Uh, some of you may recognize as Ronald Acuna of the Atlanta Braves, so let's click. And sure enough, Ronald Acuna, Atlanta Braves. And so this is the other thing you can do too. You can have the name, you can have notes about where they play, uh, where they work, or their wife's name, you know, whatever other notes you wanna remember about someone or whatever fact or you know, who said the quote, whatever you wanna put, you can put in there or really even have in the content below. In this case, again, I got it right. So uh, he's going from a level five to a level six. So it kicks out a little bit. So mid-October, he'll bubble up again for me to continue firming that memory. And then the guy on the left, let's pretend we forget who this is. So we click on it because I cannot remember his name. So you click on it and say, oh, Elon Musk, of course, I should have known that. I was up to level four, but back to level one I go. And then I'm also gonna change the date wrong to today. Today was the day I got it wrong. So there it is, I click out. It's gonna stay there now because level one has zero days on it. So in theory, if you get one wrong, work on the others for a while and come back and say, okay, now I got it, Elon Musk. I remember again, cool. So now let's move him up to level two. You'll see that kicks it to tomorrow, and then we kind of start climbing the chain again, um, and off we go. And that's really all there is to it. You could apply this to any database with a few fields, and uh, this template's available to use, but I'll show you just a bit about how it works. It's really pretty simple. There's the, of course, the name and the data with the card. The level, these are just levels, just you normal know, little selects here from 1 to 10. Uh, the date wrong is just a normal date field. You can make it whatever you want to be. Um, I call it date wrong because you put the last time you got it wrong. It would also be the date you began. So when you put a card in, you should put today's date on it. Um, and then hopefully never change it again as you get things right. And then this next field, like I showed you before, this is the one where kind of the magic happens. So this is where um, in the gallery, and you don't have to do a gallery view. I guess you probably should though. But um, in the gallery view, the next is honor before today is how we do that. So it's looking for all the cards that are due today or were due previously we didn't get to. And the way that works oops, is with a pretty messy formula, but it's really not too bad. It's saying if the level is two, take the last day you got it wrong and add one day. Or if the level's three, take the last day you got it wrong and add three days. If the level's four, add eight days. If the level's uh, 19 days. Now you notice these numbers are higher than the number that I showed you before. You know, if I showed you uh, the chart here, 
it was 1, 2, 5, 11 and ended at 639. These are 1, 3, 8, 19 and ends at 1100. The reason being, these numbers here talk about the gap, the gap. And once you learn what's going to be two more days, whatever, the issue is we got to count from when we first did it. So we've got to kind of add up all the numbers to say, okay, now do the math from our start date, adding all those up. So we add up all that stuff plus 25 more. So that makes the number bigger, uh, but it's still, the, the math should work, I think, pretty well. Um, and again, you can copy this formula. You can adjust the, the date frequency. You may say, you know what, that accelerates just too quick. I'm just not learning stuff. I keep getting it wrong and having to reset. Then just kind of ease all these numbers down a little bit. Or if you're more um, anxious, you can raise them up. Do like Anki is two and a half per, which would make them a bit faster. You could do it even a little more than that if you want. Uh, but this really should work well. So in my case, I'm going to apply this to some of the existing databases I have. Just kind of build these pieces in. But again, this is a template you can grab um, and build it out for yourself. And uh, let me know what you think.